y'all welcome back to my channel so if you guys want to learn a little bit more about hypothyroidism and how I lost my weight with having hypothyroidism then definitely stick around This is a video that I decided to make just so that way people would have a little bit more of an understanding of exactly what hypothyroidism is, um, kind of what it affects, what symptoms you get, and how it affects weight loss and weight gain for that matter. Um, so let me just start out by kind of explaining what hypothyroidism is. Hypothyroidism is basically your thyroid gland that does not make enough of the thyroid um, hormone called thyroxin, basically your T4, which basically causes your body to slow down and have all kinds of horrible, horrible symptoms. I mean, depending on how bad yours is, your symptoms could be a little bit more mild or they could be very severe. Either way, it's a very serious condition. So let me just pull this up, but I'm just gonna go through some of the symptoms that you could potentially have um, when you have hypothyroidism disease. So some of these symptoms are difficulty thinking and focusing, feeling depressed, forgetfulness, slower speech or movement, hoarse voice, puffy face, swollen thyroid glands, low energy, muscle weakness, constipation, heavy menstrual bleeding, or irregular periods, brittle fingernails, muscle and joint pain, swollen legs, ankles, or feet, hair loss, dry skin, and being cold. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but that sounds pretty icky. Just <laughs> throwing that out there because I've had many of these symptoms more than once. So when I first got diagnosed with hypothyroidism, um, I was in my 20s, I was in my later 20s. So I'm gonna go through some of the symptoms that I had, especially when I first got diagnosed with hypothyroidism, and that was my hair was falling out in crazy amounts. I would take a shower and there's just hair everywhere. Um, I was always freezing, always, always cold. My menstrual periods were so heavy. I mean, there was times where I was like, um, should I like go to the emergency room or something? Because I don't think this is normal. Um, and as a result of that, I became anemic. Uh, so, you know, that is just another issue in itself, to be honest with you. Um, my skin was so dry. I, I had difficulty focusing. I almost felt like I was anxious for no good reason. I was so lethargic, there was times where I didn't even wanna get out of the bed. I mean, I got out of the bed because I knew I had to. I had kids to take care of and everything else, but I didn't want to. I was constipated, probably TMI, but I was definitely constipated. And as far as myself goes, those were probably the big main symptoms that I had. So, I mean, I was feeling this way for a while, so I finally went to the doctor and the doctor was like, yeah, you have hypothyroidism, and she put me on medication. And um, when you first get put on medication for hypothyroidism, you have to keep going back and getting checked. They draw your blood to make sure that it's the right dose for you. And they did have to change mine a couple of times to finally find the right dose. Um, and that is the biggest thing when it comes to hypothyroidism. You have to be on the exact dose that's gonna be right for you or you're not going to feel good. Um, even today, even, this, even to this day, I can usually tell um, if my thyroid meds are not on point because um, I don't feel myself. I, uh, I start getting all those symptoms back. And, you know, like I said, unless you are going through um, hypothyroidism disease, you just don't really understand, I feel like. So, and then just to throw out there, there is two types of um, thyroid disease. There's a hypothyroid and there is a hyperthyroid. The hypothyroid is when your thyroid is definitely slowing down. Sometimes it completely shuts down. And then there is a hyperthyroid, and that's when your thyroid is um, too active. It's given off too much hormone. And hypothyroid is where, I mean, your metabolism, it's almost like you don't even have a metabolism. You know, you gain weight so, so easy. It's extremely difficult for somebody who has hypothyroidism to lose weight. Um, if you're on the right medications, I mean, obviously I've lost 60 pounds, so if you're on the right medications, it's definitely doable. However, even if you're on the right medications, 
your weight loss is still going to be slower. You know, like for instance, I have hypothyroidism and I'm pretty much almost in my mid 40s. So that combination right there, I'm not going to lose weight at the same rate that somebody that's in their 20s or 30s that's healthy. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's not possible because obviously it is, um, but it it's still a struggle. I'm not even gonna lie. And I know this sounds terrible, but back when I first got diagnosed and I was trying to kind of learn about thyroidism and stuff like that is, but I was like, man, why did I have to get diagnosed with hypothyroidism, you know? Cause that, I forgot to mention that, that was another symptom that I had when I got diagnosed is I was gaining weight and I was like, what the flip? I'm not doing anything different. Um, but yeah, so when I first got diagnosed, I was doing all this research and I came across hyperthyroidism and I was like, well, I was like, that's just my luck. I got diagnosed with hypothyroidism and instead of hyperthyroidism, because if I would have got diagnosed with hyperthyroidism, I would have lost weight, not gained weight. And that was a terrible way to think because you don't want it at all. You want to be normal. You want your thyroid um, hormones to be working normally. Like... I don't wish hyper or hypo on anybody, to be honest with you. So that was just kind of un, an uneducated thing for me to even think or say, um, to be honest with you, because they're both, um, you don't want either one. You know, you have horrible symptoms with both. So in a nutshell, that's kind of what hypothyroidism is and how it can affect you. It is definitely a serious condition because if your thyroid were to shut down and if you were to not get medical condition, you would die. Your body cannot function without the thyroid. My biggest thing is I just wanted to bring up awareness how big of a deal this is. I mean, it's kind of a little bit of a big deal. <laughs> I just feel like a lot of people don't understand it. So I'm just trying to bring awareness to people as to how serious this condition really can be if you're not on your accurate medications. The one thing though that I feel like doctors should bring up is diet because diet plays a huge role in people who have hypo, I'm, I'm sure, I haven't really researched the hyper, but I'm sure it probably pertains to hyperthyroidism as well. But hypothyroidism, I mean, foods play a huge role. When it comes to gluten, sugar, carbs, that plays a huge role in hypothyroidism. You really want to stay away from that stuff. And I think that's why keto worked so well for me, even though at the time that I started keto, I didn't know that. I didn't even really start researching um, foods to kind of stay away from when it comes to hypothyroidism until um, just actually just kind of recently. So let me bring that up. Let me bring up the foods that really, um, the foods that you should really avoid when it comes to hypothyroidism. So some of the foods that they say in here, some of them they say to try to avoid completely and some of them they say to basically limit them. I'm not gonna go over the details, I'm just gonna kind of go down the list of the things that you should kind of try to avoid or limit, just to kind of give you guys an idea. So soy and tofu is one of them, including like edamame, um, that is one of them on the list. Luckily I don't eat that anyway. Um, cruciferous vegetables such as such as Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, kale, turnips, bok, and bok choy. I do eat these kind of vegetables. This is one of them that it says to limit. It doesn't say that you have to completely take it out of your diet, but to just limit it. So they say to maybe limit it to like five ounces a day. Um, I don't even eat those vegetables every single day. I try to stick to more of like um, leafy greens and stuff like that, but I do eat these from time to time. Gluten is a big one. This one they say to completely avoid. Um, and I pretty much completely cut gluten out of my diet when I started keto once in a great blue, 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 blue moon. I will eat one of those um, low carb mission tortillas, but that's very, very, very rare. And then this does say fatty foods, but it's, um, when they say this, I think that they mean more of like the bad fats. They're not talking like avocado oils and olive oils and coconut oils and stuff like that. So basically remove the bad fats from your diet. Another one is sugary and processed foods. Completely avoid those at all costs. I mean, any 
pretty much everybody should avoid those at all costs anyway. This also says be careful with excess fiber in your diet because I guess it can mess with your thyroid treatment. So if you are the type of person that you eat a ton of fiber, you may want to talk to your doctor because they may need to up your medication just a little bit to kind of, I guess, balance that out. Then it says alcohol is not good for the thyroid. Then when it comes to coffee, just make sure that you don't take your coffee too close to your thyroid medication because that is the biggest thing when, and I used to do this, I am guilty of this until recently. Um, you take your thyroid medication, you're supposed to only take your thyroid medication with water because it does not work well with food or anything literally but water. Like that's where you're gonna get the best results. And they say to wait a half an hour before you drink your coffee or anything like that. So definitely just be careful when you take your thyroid medication and want your morning joe as well. Um, to be honest with you, I have been taking my um, thyroid medication at night. So I try not to eat after six and then I usually don't go to bed till 10. That way it gives me four hours. Um, where I don't have anything in my stomach except for water and I've been taking my thyroid medication at 10 right before I go to bed so that way it has all night long with nothing in my tummy to soak it up. And let me just tell you, I have noticed a big difference in that. And I really think that's why keto works so well for me and actually helped me lose the weight because I've been on a million other diets um, with hypothyroidism and they didn't work. So I think between being on the right dose of medication and eliminating a lot of those things that was on that list um, of not to eat when you have hypothyroidism, because keto automatically takes the sugar out of the equation. It takes all those refined carbs out of the equation. It takes, you know, a lot of the things, like I said, that are on that list is completely eliminated when you start keto anyway. So I think that's why it has helped me so much you know, like I said, just being on the right meds, eating the right foods, and here I am a year later, down 60 pounds. Um, I just busted through a plateau, Whew, finally. Um, but, you know, 60 pounds in a little over a year for somebody that has hypothyroidism is a big deal, you guys. And um, like I said, I was in a plateau for quite some time, and I finally broke through that plateau but I will never ever complain about my weight loss because keto um, has literally just saved my life. Keto has been the best thing that has happened to me health-wise. And in my personal opinion, therefore, it has given me better thyroid function, to be honest with you guys. But I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, this is just my own personal opinion, and I just speak from my own personal experiences. So. For now, I think that's all I have for you guys. I truly hope that this video is not only helpful for those of you who are suffering from the same condition, but also helpful for those of you who don't understand the condition. Um, I hope it's just, I, I honestly hope that this video just raises awareness as to how big of a deal this disease really is. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you guys right now. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you guys. And don't forget to go out there and make today even better than yesterday. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye.